Not many people know this. Not long ago, I actually worked in a factory making trucks, making semis. I did. I worked in a factory making semis for more than a year. I didn't make the semis myself, but I saw what was going on with production. Well, now Toyota aims to change production of the factory that I worked in. And in fact, many factories around the world, it says it is offering its hydrogen conversion kits. Will this be a winner? Will it catch on? Well, I guess it could. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name is Sam Evans. And I just saw a very interesting <laughs> article published about some comments I made in a YouTube video in the Daily Mail. I'll put a link to the article in the description below if you guys want to check that out. It was weird. They asked me for permission to put it in the article. But they never actually said whether or not they'd made the article. And it's just an article basically just quoting me. Now, apparently, I've made a lot of people angry. They're angry about the fact that I'm promoting electric cars in Australia. They believe that I'm wrong about Japanese cars. They love Japanese Toyota car brand, and they love some other Japanese brands. And um, it looks like, you know, I'm scaring them with what I'm saying about electric cars taking over. Now, I think electric trucks, electric semis are the future of the big rig transportation industry. I don't think hydrogen will play a part in it. I think that a lot of people thought that would happen and now they're starting to realize it won't. For example, the biggest expert on hydrogen here in Australia, he actually invented a hydrogen system that is now licensed by many of the world's automakers. Well, he says hydrogen doesn't make sense for cars and even for semis and trucks. Well, now Toyota Motor Corporation, who have invested billions into hydrogen development, are moving forward with repurposing technology from their Mirai fuel cell passenger sedan to create a hydrogen power kit for heavy duty trucks. Are they talking about F-150s or F-250s, that sort of thing? No, but I'm sure that they'll make something for those at some point as well. Toyota said on Monday that the California Air Resources Board granted a zero emissions powertrain executive order for the heavy duty truck fuel cell electric powertrain. The order certifies a powertrain complies with emission standards required for sale in California. The reason Toyota is going after this market in California is that California have banned the sale of gasoline and diesel powered trucks as of 20. 28. So yeah, this is a captive market. This is such a good market for Tesla to disrupt in particular. Like I said, I, I don't see too many companies really taking off going, yeah, we want hydrogen trucks right now because, well, there's not many hydrogen powered fuel stations. And the ones that there are, you can only fill up 50 vehicles, but that's not a truck. That's 50 cars. Imagine how much hydrogen there would be for trucks. Imagine you had one hydrogen powered truck pull up to this same station, hydrogen fueling station, it would only give about maybe maximum two trucks enough fuel to keep going. It doesn't work yet. Anyhow, it could in the future, but right now it doesn't make sense. So it's a captive market for electric truck manufacturers, which is quite a few. It's not only Tesla doing this, by the way, BYD as well. It's Volvo, it's Mercedes. Mercedes, by the way, if you haven't seen my video, Mercedes said that the Tesla semi defies the laws of physics. If you haven't seen that video that I made, I'll put a link in the description to it. Toyota started experimenting with building a hydrogen fuel cell class eight truck in 2017. It used two fuel cell stacks from a Mirai sedan and a cab and chassis built by Kenworth to create a prototype truck. The irony about all of this is the fact that that was about the time in which Toyota said, we don't need you anymore, Tesla. We see no value in your technology. They got rid of their partnership publicly. Then they sold their shares in Tesla for a minuscule amount of money in comparison to what they are worth today. Kenworth and Toyota jointly pushed the technology forward, building 10 trucks to run drayage routes from the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach to inland Southern California destinations. The test served as a proof of concept, and Toyota now plans to begin assembling new, more fuel-efficient fuel cell modules for hydrogen-powered heavy-duty commercial trucks at its Kentucky plant later this year. Toyota said the new powertrain offers improvements in energy efficiency and packaging size over earlier generations. 
We believe hydrogen will play a significant role in the emissions reduction of heavy duty transport while not sacrificing the distance, power or fueling times needed to keep these fleet and individual operators running, said Chris Rovick, Executive Program Manager in Toyota Motor North America's Advanced Mobility Division. Now, obviously, Toyota are poo-hooing electric trucks, electric semis. Why? Because they don't make any. So therefore, obviously, they're saying, no, 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 what we've got is better. Without mentioning the fact that hydrogen is quite expensive and there are very few places to actually fill up. However, that said, there's a the opportunity here is so vast because if you consider the reality that you get a 40,000 US dollar discount on a semi, if it is powered by electricity or hydrogen, even though hydrogen isn't currently clean, isn't currently a clean fuel, all the hydrogen used to power vehicles right now is manufactured from fossil fuels. So it's not clean at all, but it could be in the future. But anyway, a 40,000 US dollar advantage versus your competition, those who are selling gasoline, or particularly diesel powered trucks, that's a pretty massive hurdle to overcome. Toyota declined to provide information about customers or pricing, except to note that the kit will be eligible for California's environmental incentives and makes up another tool for truck manufacturers and fleets to meet the state's increasingly stringent emissions regulations. Internal combustion engine vehicles will be banned in 2035. Well, the sales of them, not the ownership of old ones, but the sales of new ones. Isn't it a bit stranger that Toyota wouldn't give us any specifications, won't tell the media the price, won't tell the media the actual range of these kits, just seems strangely secretive. If they have a good product, normally when you have a great product, you say, hey, yeah, all right, we're just releasing it to the market. This is what it will do. It's going to be amazing. It's going to knock your socks off. Instead, just crickets. I mean, I don't understand that. Someone explain this logic. Advocates of fuel cell trucks say the technology has many advantages over electric trucks which are starting to roll out in fleets on the West Coast. For example, Tesla has already delivered semis to Frito-Lay and Pepsi. Hydrogen trucks fuel quickly and would not create the delays of long battery charging times for truckers who must comply with federal limits on the number of hours they can drive daily. One way to solve this issue is a number of electric truck manufacturers are now building their trucks with replaceable batteries. You can essentially do what you can do with a Neo electric car. The truck is simply replaced in a matter of probably around five minutes, but battery packs in trucks are heavy and the kind of machinery needed to install that setup is complex. Fuel cell trucks also don't need a giant heavy battery, making them a little bit lighter. In some instances, the extra weight of the battery pack can reduce the amount of cargo a truck can haul, says Automotive News. Fuel cell technology is scalable, and we believe it can take an increasingly visible and important role in a collective fight to reduce and eliminate carbon as we move towards a hydrogen society, said Rovic. Now, I should point out, Toyota is a massive proponent of hydrogen fuel cell technology because they've invested billions of dollars into it. They often rail against EVs because only 0.2% of their global car sales are fully electric. Toyota is a major proponent of this technology. It believes the future of the automotive industry is not EVs, but eventually when hydrogen technology becomes cheap enough and good enough, then that's when everyone will ditch their EVs, ditch their hybrids, ditch whatever it is they're driving and start running for a Toyota hydrogen powered vehicle. Do you agree with that? Let me know what your thoughts are. However, hydrogen is also a bit of a sore topic for some people, including myself, because Toyota in particular are investing many, many hundreds of millions of dollars into hydrogen engines as an internal combustion engine that burns hydrogen. Although the exhaust from fuel cells is only water, combustion engines or internal combustion engines that burn hydrogen emit nitrogen oxides, but no carbon dioxide. However, the thing is right now, to get the hydrogen needed for these trucks and fuel them, well, lots of fossil fuel will be used and lots of energy. In fact, 
the energy reward ratio is extremely low with hydrogen. To get, say, one liter or one kilo of hydrogen, you need three times as much electricity as the power left in the kilo of hydrogen. So compared to electric vehicles, hydrogen vehicles are not as efficient. Other truck makers and auto companies see hydrogen as a promising zero or near zero tailpipe emissions fuel. Hyundai plans to unveil the production version of its Exigent fuel cell truck for the North American commercial vehicle market at the ACT Expo Conference in California in May. Hyundai said this truck already has more than 4 million miles of cumulative driving in commercial operations in Switzerland, New Zealand, Germany, Israel, and South Korea. It also plans to outline its US business strategy for the truck at the conference. Meanwhile, Nikola, a Phoenix, Arizona startup, been in the news for the wrong reasons on numerous occasions, said it has orders for 100 Class 8 tray hydrogen fuel cell trucks and plans to begin deliveries in the fourth quarter of this year. However, they have been convicted as a company of lying about their previous pre-orders, so we have no idea if those numbers are actually correct. Kelly Centric, a 50-50 joint venture between Mercedes or Daimler Truck Group, the owner of the Freightliner brand, and Volvo Group is developing a fuel cell powertrain for heavy duty trucks. However, all of these plans depend on building a hydrogen fueling network in the US, especially along major trucking routes. According to the Department of Energy, there is only 60 fueling stations, mostly in urban California, but they failed to mention the fact that None of them are actually set up right now, or at least very few of them, for commercial trucking. Let me know, my friends, what do you think about hydrogen trucks? Now, I used to think they would work. I now believe that they've simply been surpassed by superior electric vehicle technology. Thank you for watching.